Welcome to Reason in Brief. In this video, we're going to talk about uh, a few different ways to layer your drums in Reason here using Kong. So let's go ahead and get started. The first way, I just have a uh, kit from the hip hop kit, kits that comes with Reason. Uh, so the first way, we've just got the sounds that they've loaded in. If you'd like to layer any of these sounds, I'll take the bass drum. Let's show drum and effects section by clicking that down arrow. This is our actual sample that is being played on pad one. So what we're going to do is be sure we have that highlighted. Add layer. Click this button here and then click browse and we want Kong patches, Kong sounds and samples or you could go to a folder where you have your own drum sound saves, saved. We'll just go to bass drums so we'll just choose that. While you have that new layer highlighted just double click and there we now have both of these that will play at the same time. Now you can set it up so that they will both play back only at certain velocities. So uh, this BD404 is playing at velocity 1 through 127. You can see at the bottom here that corresponds with this bar here. So if you want to click on the corner and raise that up to say 69 just for instance we'll leave this one at the full range of 1 through 127 as I've said in previous videos these pads go from 4 through 127 in velocity range so if we click at the bottom we're only going to get that first sample that we started out with so that would be a light depression on your MIDI keyboard if that's what you're using but the harder you uh, the harder the velocity on, on your MIDI keyboard the harder you play the keys you're gonna move up to where that BD 404 is okay so that is the first way and I'm just gonna select that one we brought in and remove layer that's how you move it out now they have another bass drum here on pad number five. So say we just want to use these two. You would simply select the first one, go to the pad group settings and click, we'll just choose D as the link group, select the BD2, the other bass drum that you want to have linked put that in the same group so then now you see whichever one we clicked on they're both triggered a quicker way to make these assignments if you'd like to do more than two is to click on the quick edit button and you can then choose the link groups here for each pad I'll go ahead and deselect these and hit escape to close the quick edit window okay and let's take another, uh, a look at another completely different way of layering your drums that will also make use of the red drum drum computer so I'll F6 and maximize the rack let's bring in a Kong and go back to instruments and bring in a redrum so they both have their default kits loaded in. I'm not going to make any changes to this because this I'm just showing you quickly how you can layer using these two separate uh, drum uh, devices together. And this method may be particularly useful for those of you who like to use pattern-based uh, sequencing of your drums. So what you need to do is hit tab, flip the rack around, on the back of the redrum, you're going to have gate out. 
Uh, you also have gate out on Kong. You also have gate in, though, and that's what we'd like. So starting with the number one here, you would take the gate out and attach that to gate in of number one. You can actually put these wherever you'd like, but um, I prefer to do it to match up like so. And we'll just do the first four here to give you an idea. So now, whenever you are working with your pattern and you're using that method to create your drum tracks, wherever you select um, your bass drum, for instance, to be triggered, it will then send out control voltage signal to pad one and also trigger that in the Kong as well. So if I just click on this the audition sound here, you can see that the pad is also triggered. So I'll just run it. So you can see it's and it may be a bit hard to tell, but if I were to select the bass drum and let's mute that. You can then hear we still have our BD Disco on the redrum. And I'll unmute up here so we can then hear them together. And I think we'll stop there. Um, of course, you can, in the sequencer, just play your drums live, and you can set up a loop, record bass and snare, and then come back around and record a sec second snare in. This would actually be the ideal way for me to record and layer my drums. It, it just gives me more flexibility when I'm editing. Uh, and if I want to do any uh, ghost notes using just one particular snare drum sound, then I have that option. Whereas if I'm layering in these ways that I've showed you, you can't particularly do that because the sounds are they're connected in a way that you can't separate them uh, by adjusting the MIDI notes uh, because they're all triggered from the one MIDI event or MIDI note. So, but of course I do have situations where I just want to quickly be able to layer and use them in this way. And if that's what you're looking for, I hope that this was helpful for you. Thanks for watching.